So this is where we left off in the previous video. You'd baked out your diffuse map, you'd baked out an occlusion map, and then layered those up quickly in Photoshop to give you this sort of image you can see before you. If we just open up this layer here, we can see we have our two occlusion maps, one with soft light set at 50% opacity, one multiply set at 50% opacity. And just a little tip is to actually name your layers just so that you can look at them and know exactly what the blending mode is and opacity is without having to physically go in and select them. So there we have diffuse, we have our lighting pass which is giving us that extra bit of depth to the model and also we can use this to help guide us as we paint as we can see where other main areas of the geometry are. If we were just working on this we'd be working a bit blind but adding the lighting just gives us that extra bit of help as we go and to add to that we've also got a wireframe which is just a UV snapshot exported from Maya as well and as you can see this just gives us the border detail and shows us where the actual mesh and the UVs are so from here if I just turn off the wireframe briefly so from here we can start to concentrate on Photoshop now and start building on this basic texture and I'm saying it's basic is because at the moment it's quite sparse of detail there's nothing really there apart from the colour and lighting what we want to do is start to add, make this a little bit more unique so the first stage is to think about what sort of larger areas of detail you want to add to this and this could be uh, lettering or stickers, decals, things like that which sort of make this uh, a bit more unique Perhaps you want to add in logos which associate it with the company that makes this sort of machinery. You know, just think of things like that. So if I go to this stage one group here, this stage, um, if I enable this, you can see here, just quickly added in some lettering here, some on the back. These strips here, which just add a bit of uh, detail to the surface as well. Also some some warning stickers, because on any heavy machinery you do tend to get all these sort of warning stickers around it about um, the load it can carry, don't climb on it, warnings about it being electrical, this, that and the other. So that just sort of ties it all in with the theme of the model. The next stage after that is to then work in, and I've called it a recess layer and I'll explain that shortly. But as you can see here, if I just turn it on and off again, all this is is just black lines, dots and circles and whatever other shapes you want to use. And this is going to mark out any extra panelling which we've got on the surface of the model. Also these dots here as well. It's all just about thinking about surface detail. And we've drawn this in black because later on we can use this when we generate our bump map and that's why it's called a recess because black will be pushed into the surface of the model if we wanted to we could do a an inverted version and that would pull details out of the model so if you wanted in in, in addition to the recess you could do a, an extra one um, just to mark those out just so you know where they are as you start painting your textures because as we start painting these it's a good idea to know where these uh, panels are here just so that we know where to add wear and tear where we can add bits that have been worn away and where we can add dirt um, and general damage and it will sort of work al along the edges of these uh, recesses here there's also a little red dot there which I just added on as like a little red light as well so if we just switch to Maya and just have a look at how this is looking on the actual model so here we can see all I've done is as I'm working through this we're just going to be looking at the torso texture page here so as you can see we have our text we have our red dot we have all these other de uh, details marked out we have our stickers and that's just telling us where these panels are so that we know later on and these do look quite low resolution here 
but that's just because Maya is displaying them at a lower resolution than what they are. I think I'm currently working at 3K maps. Now these, they probably won't be supplied along with this tutorial at that high resolution because we're going to try and keep the file size lower. But just so you know, it looks low resolution here, but that's just the display um, from what Maya is displaying because it's just reducing the textures just to keep things fast and in memory. So yeah, as I say, we're going to focus just purely on the torso. So the limbs will be updating as well as we go, but it's just exactly the same process. So here we have the first pass, and that's just marking out these details, adding in these decals, textures, uh, other key areas. So let's go back to Photoshop. So the next stage is to start actually applying some uh, dirt and just grubbing up uh, the, uh, the surface of this machine. So let's go to stage two here. Now you'll see we have these various maps, rust, dirt one, dirt two. If I just show one, let's just turn off the lighting just for now so we can see the map on its own. Rust, there's nothing quite, uh, nothing really taxing about that. These are just textures which are sourced from the internet. They could be photographs, uh, they could be hand-painted textures that somebody else has done and you purchased. I think these were supplied as part of 3D Total's uh, Total Texture Series. Um, I've had these for quite a long time now, but they're still very useful for uh, building up uh, dirt uh, and age on, uh, on machines. So we have rust, we have one general dirt texture there, and another dirt texture there. And as you can see, they are quite repetitive because they're, they're smaller and I've just repeated them. And that, that is not necessarily an issue. So now we have these in. Let's just turn our lighting back on. Oops. Ah, selecting the wrong ones there, sorry. So let's just turn our lighting back on. And what all we're going to do with these is just work through the blending modes until we get something that we're happy with. So let's just start with darken, multiply, multiply could work if you want it to look really dark and grubby but we don't want to go that far. Tend to lean more towards overlay initially which looks okay and soft light much like we did with the lighting. So let's maybe hard light so let's just set that to overlay for now, just so we can see it. Now the problem is we have it on the, these areas here are the glass and we don't want rust on the, gra on the glass. So to help us with that, rather than going in and actually deleting straight off this layer here, as you saw earlier when it flashed up, I have a mask here. Now this needs inverting, so it'll work in here. But all we're gonna do is just copy that, select our rust, Click down here just to add a quick mask to that. And then go into our channel bar. Paste it in here. Now I know it needs inverting, so image adjust invert. If we go back, now we can see here, the rust is everywhere but on the windows. So if you wanted the rust everywhere but maybe on these more metallic parts, you could mask those off as well. So let's go down to the next layer and that's our dirt layer and we can do exactly the same but this time because it's just a black and white texture I'm just going to use multiply because I just want the dark areas there as you can see that's works quite well it's added those that sort of dirt and debris and scuffs and scratches onto there and again we don't really want that on the glass so we create another mask paste that in Again, it needs to be inverted and go back. So that's nicely masked off there. And just like we did with the occlusion layer, play around with the opacity. Maybe you don't want it so strong. And it just comes down to personal preference now. It's just playing around with the blending modes, playing around with the opacity until you get something that you're happy with. Just turn on the wireframe again, just so we can see where we are. Just zoom in a little bit there. So as you can see, we've just quickly 
just by applying a couple of textures, grubbed up that uh, that texture effectively. The problem we do have now, though, is this is just affecting everything. We've got dirt and this rust material all over the model. Now, if you look at uh, if you look at metallic objects or um, JCBs or uh, sort of these heavy duty uh, big mechanical uh, machinery basically on building sites and things the dirt although you do get splashes of it over large surfaces it does tend to gather more around the edges and increases so now we have this basically overlaid over the entire model it's now time to go in and start painting out main areas and you could if you wanted to keep your texture paint directly onto the mask and that just means this texture isn't being affected you're just painting onto the mask so just as an example we have our we have our texture here so let's just go in with our brush scale that down you know maybe increase the opacity a little bit Let's just look for an area where we can start painting out. So like, where's the front? I think this is the front here. So the dirt is going to gather more. If I just turn off the rust, let's just focus on the dirt and I'll turn the opacity right up just so we can see this a bit more. Select the mask and we want black is going to paint that out. So let's say behind here. Nope, we want to be painting rather than erasing. Let's just undo that. Want a softer brush. Drop that opacity down a little bit there because we want it to sort of fade away. We don't want it to just be such so harsh. Okay, that's not working. So let's just switch to our erase brush and work directly onto this. That's not working either. Have I got something selected? Ah, there we go. Just get my brush a bit smaller. As you can see there, let's just turn that off. We're starting to paint away. Now we know the panelling is here. So we can make our brush a little bit smaller. Let's turn our opacity down again. We know that the panelling is here because we brought, we've created our lines. So we, need, we want the dirt to stay around the edges. So here, we can just erase that from that there and if you're worried about texture seams you could always get rid of some like so just around the edges just to be safe then in here we know this is where the arm joins onto the uh, shoulder so again we've got this panelling around here so we could maybe keep the dirt around there this is where the pipes are touching the surface so again we could go in we could make sure the dirt stays near to the pipes but that's the general idea just work your way around just start to erase some of this dirt and also do it to the rust texture as well just select that mask again and just see if that will work we paint black onto there. So it is working, you can just see it there, it's just quite faint. It's probably because the opacity. Yeah, so that's working there now. So these are the grills at the front of the uh, vent. So maybe you want a bit less dirt at the front, more at the back, where it's gathered at the back of the vent. 
But you get the general idea there, and it's just about going around, painting on, and ed editing those details. Now you've noticed I've got another dirt texture here, and that's we're going to use that later on for the uh, decals. But for now, just focus on those main big areas of texture. And I've got a couple here which I've already worked on. So we've got rust there, which is set to colour burn opacity 25, and dirt, which is multiply 50. I've gone in and just deleted some of the key areas and softened it down quite a bit because we want, I wanted the dirt to just be a bit more subtle. So if we switch to Maya now, so this is how it was before. And this is it with a bit of dirt applied. And again, it's quite a low resolution texture, but you can just make out the dirt around the edges there, underneath here. Maybe if we switch this to viewport 2.0, that'll increase the texture quality slightly. That's better. Ah, but as you can see, this version of the texture has had that applied to the uh, decals as well. So I'll just switch it, it back. Now all we did with the decals, let's just copy this Dirt 2 texture here. We'll hide that, go back to our decal layer, and again, we just used a mask. We paste the Dirt layer into the decal mask. Now let's go to our decals. Now that's a bit too severe, so maybe this wants inverting as well. Image adjust, invert, and that's better. Using that mask, I just added a bit of wear and tear to the decals as well. So that's all the difference is between this and the one that you've just seen in Maya. And again, we could always sharpen that up, just using the sharpen tool, just to make the edges a bit harsher, to make it look more like it's been gouged away from the surface. So, let's have a look at where we are now. So that's stage one. We've added in our decals and also added in a mask just to wear away a bit of the edges. We've added in our black lines and things just to uh, dictate where the panelling is going to be. And we've also just started working on uh, adding in some subtle dirt and sort of surface detail and rust. So next, we want to start to go in. Now we've done those global areas. Next, we're going to go in and just start painting in more wear and tear and this is going to be if you look at any metallic object be it a car a van or some sort of mech when it's being you been used for a while areas which come into contact with other well with anything really uh, the edges get worn away paint gets chipped off so what we need to do is mimic that now by uh, working that into the texture so again, we can just go in and paint these in. And we're going to paint these in by hand rather than using a texture. You could, in theory, find a texture, chop it up, and then start to paste it in and bend it so it fits around these edges. But to be honest, I, I find it easier just to create this through a texture. So to start us off, we're just going to start with a new layer. And all we're going to do, I'm just going to move my, I'm working with a, uh, a a Cintiq here. And I think for texture painting or anything like that, it's really useful to have a Wacom tablet of some degree. I'm going to turn my brush right down. Turn the hardness up. Just see that, that's it. Turn that down. And we're just going to use a flat, sort of a medium grey colour. So let's, for example, say we're going to let's pick a good area. All right, let's just do down here. So we know this is the corner of the model here. And again, if you're not sure, you can always edit this slightly jump into Maya, 
check see what it looks like on the model if you're off slightly then just come back and adjust it so all we're going to do is just go in and it's almost like we're scratching away at the surface so we may want a smaller brush again remember I'm working at a 3k size here so it may be smaller so we're just going to go in let's turn our opacity right up because we want this to be quite severe and all we're doing is just going to this corner is going to be marked so we want it to be softened around that edge there now it doesn't look like much at the moment because it's just flat grey and obviously when you have areas like this on a, a realistic model they're shiny and they're reflective to contrast with the paint which is a lot more matte maybe the paint's got a slight specularity to it but this bit is normally a lot shinier because it's exposing the metal underneath so it can zoom in a little bit now this can take quite a while to do if you imagine you're going around two 3k textures painting in things by hand like so but all we need to do is just sort of if you imagine and again we've got these panels here so normally we'd end up with some sort of wear on the corner of these panels as well maybe we want a chip of paint here just reduce our brush a little bit more just to get some of those edges a bit harsher so you have to think if if something this is the front something's chipped hit this corner here you may get bits where the paints chipped off like so just drop our opacity down on our wire a little bit just so we can see through that but you get the idea there it's just working your way around focusing on the corners right, there's a corner here just add a little bit of a bevel in there so to speak and then some shards coming off where it's been scratched and obviously you could if you wanted to let's have some big scratches across here where something's just been dropped and just gouged out at the front like so now imagine you've gone around and you've painted this in all the way around your model I mean this is a good area to, to work on as well we know that these are the corners here so we could go in and just add some wear to those corners because they're quite exposed so they will get a lot of damage like so and so on and so on but at the moment it's, it is looking a little flat um, what we could also do is just maybe just do a quick sharpen on it just to sharpen the edges of those now we'll just turn off the wireframe what we can do to help enhance this and this may only work if you're working on higher resolutions is add a couple of um, effects to this so first thing we're going to do is add in an outer glow just bring this over we'll just set this to normal we want it to be white and we, we want it to be quite small maybe a pixel or two click OK and all this is going to do is this is going to mimic I mean obviously your texture is maybe painted with a bit more care than these these are just quick but when paint is chipped away from a, a metallic object you get almost sort of an undercoat of the paint exposed and it's normally you have your metal underneath you get sort of the white undercoat of the paint exposed just around the edges and you get um, then you get the paint on top so adding in that thin white border just helps to replicate 
that undercoat a little bit more. And now we've got that effect added, we can still go in and continue to paint on top of this and it's just going to add that in for us. We can just go in and sharpen some of these edges here. Maybe there's just a bit more paint peeled away here. You know, you can just start to chip away at the surface. And we can also, if we wanted to, just go in and add another layer, this time an inner glow, but do the opposite. We'll just set that to normal and we'll just make it black. Like so. And you, you can already see it's starting to make it look like it's more recessed into the model. So if we just maybe, just again, have that as just one pixel, just so you get a little bit of depth. Click OK. And again, we can now go around. If we turn those effects on and off. That looks quite flat. That just looks a little bit more like it's recessed into the surface. Now again, it's looking quite flat and grey, but we're going to change that later on in the next video, perhaps, when we uh, introduce a specular map. So these bits will be really reflective, really shiny, so they'll look really metallic against the uh, surface of the model. And again, even with these blending layers Blending, uh, even with these effects added, sorry, we could still go in, turn on our wireframe, just go around and just paint in some more, like so. And this is just doing this quickly, but then it's just going to add those as we paint. And as you can see, we've got the the thin black line just in there, just just giving us that little bit of depth and then we've got that white line which is just mimicking that undercoat, uh, an undercoat of that paint. So if I just zoom out just switch back to the mouse uh, so turn that off, turn the wireframe off so we have a stage here and this is just one where I've gone in and I've gone round and painted a lot more of those worn away edges in what I've also done is added in a worn steel. Now obviously the, the steel areas haven't got paint chipped away on them. So it's exactly the same process, except you're just using a white over the top. This is set to soft light here. Set that to normal. Let's just zoom in. You can just see it's just very quickly painted around those metal bits just to make them look like they've been worn away. Let's set that to light again. So those are the major steps that I've taken to get to this stage. And if we look up here, we switch on this final version. See, it's just been played around with a bit more, added a few more textured layers over the top, um, worked a bit more on the wear and tear where these areas have been uh, worn away. So let's just go back to Maya. Here we go. So this is where we were before, let's wait for it to load, and here's where we are with those bits painted in, that wear and tear, areas chipped away from the surface, works particularly well down here because the feet and the toes are going to come into contact a lot with uh, boxes, stairs and other things as it's walking around because they move more than anything else. So. It's important to get a lot of wear and tear down here. So that's the texture painting pretty much covered. And obviously it's just a very quick way to add in wear and tear and dirt to your textures. If you've got more time, you can obviously spend a lot more time painting uh, more details into this model, more details into the textures, adding more dirt, um, maybe you want it to be rustier. It's entirely up to you. But by following those simple steps, you could start to generate your basic diffuse map. It's just a case of find good textures online, overlay those onto your diffuse map using your occlusion map to give you that extra bit of depth. You can then paint on top of that to add in the worn away edges of the metal. We'll just switch back to Photoshop. So this is the diffuse map pretty much completed. Like I say you can work more on this 
do a lot more to it. Um, I think for the purposes of this tutorial we've pretty much covered all the bases for generating the diffuse map and it's important to keep things layered up so that you've got your dirt on different layers, you've got your uh, wear and tear on different layers. That just uh, It's just common sense, it makes thing, keeps things uh, future proof in case things get uh, need to be edited or changed but it also means that what we can do now is use those layers and uh, they can be used to generate our bump map and our specular maps and there they are what we will look at in the next video.